Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed dinner. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the president of Damon College, Dr. Gary A. Olson. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to our annual scholarship gala, which is our signature fundraising event for student scholarships. Now for 71 years, Damon has empowered our students to succeed, challenged them to reach their full potential, and provided them the opportunity to benefit from the Damon academic experience that creates a better life for our graduates. This gala is a celebration of the students we're here to support. Scholarships have a lasting and powerful impact on the lives of many deserving and talented students at Damon. The educational dreams of our students are made possible thanks to the much needed scholarship support funded by this premier event. It is the confidence that each of you has in our students that has made this gala such a tremendous success. And during this evening, you've had the opportunity to engage with several of our students whose lives have been enriched and transformed through scholarships and the generosity of our supporters. And please take a moment, uh, if you haven't already, to chat with these students about the life-changing impact the scholarships have had on them. You may also want to read the student testimonials on your table. There's a bunch of them on each table. As many of you recall, at last year's gala, it was my great honor to formally announce the public launch of our Drive to 75 campaign, which is the first ever comprehensive campaign in Damon's history. This is an ambitious fundraising effort with a goal of $22 million. This campaign is crucial to taking Damon to the next level of excellence, and it supports our vision for what comes next for our institution, and most importantly, for our students. I'm immensely pleased to report to you now that since our highly successful public launch one year ago today, we have now raised nearly 85% of the campaign goal. <clears throat> I think that is something to be proud of. Your unwavering dedication to Damon and to our students has been pivotal, pivotal to reaching this campaign milestone and is further shaping the culture of excellence that exists today in all facets in the college. It is with profound gratitude that I thank each and every one of you for your continued support uh, as we work to make and perhaps even exceed our campaign goal. You know, I'm quite proud of all that Damon has accomplished as one of the top private institutions, I think, in the nation. In fact, just last month, Damon was ranked nationally by Money Magazine as one of the best colleges in America for educational quality, affordability, and alumni success. These are all areas that have driven, thank you. These are all areas that have driven the vision of Damon since its founding way back in 1947. This designation is one of many that Damon has earned over the last five years. Let me just tell you about a few. Damon was selected for the 11th consecutive year as a National College of Distinction and was given program-specific recognition in business, education, and nursing for two years in a row. For the ninth consecutive year, Damon was named by Victory Media as a military-friendly school, making us one of the best colleges in the nation for veterans to receive a college education. We like that one. Damon was selected the best value schools as one of the 50 best value colleges and universities in all of New York. And we were only the private college, by the way, in the Buffalo, Niagara region to be included on that list. And for the eighth consecutive year, Damon was named to the President's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll, which is the highest federal recognition an institution can receive for its commitment 
to the community, service learning, and civic engagement. And also, Damon was named by the Chronicle of Higher Education as one of the top 10 small four-year institutions to work for in the entire nation. So, thank you. So these are only a few of the number of national, regional, and local distinctions Damon has garnered over the uh, recent years. And thanks to many of our, our many generous supporters, uh, including all of you, each of you in this room, the college has uh, built up an impressive momentum over the last five years. Let me tell you just a little bit about the progress we've made in that time frame. We increased the physical footprint of the campus from 37 to 43 acres, opening up a whole new section of campus along Getzville Road that includes Alumni House and Honors House, breaching the traditional bounds of the campus and opening up the Academic and Wellness Center across Main Street and even opening up a branch campus office in Brooklyn for our unique graduate programs in Brooklyn. We transform the look and feel of the physical campus through a campus beautification uh, program that included new, the new stone wall that graces the uh, campus perimeter, 150 new mature trees, stone benches dotting the campus, upgrading uh, the uh, landscaping, and modern signage throughout the grounds. We conducted major renovations of our campus facilities, including faculty and academic departments in Dunscotus, the student dining facility, the campus cafe known as The Den, our state-of-the-art 3D theater in the research and information commons, and major overhauls of Curtis Hall and our key natural science laboratories, of course, not to mention the Academic and Wellness Center on Main Street. We also made campus security a priority and formed a thoroughly professionalized and well-trained uh, campus safety force, installed safety locks on all classroom doors, which nowadays, as you know, is crucial, instituted a professional safety alert system on campus, installed high-definition surveillance campus uh, cameras throughout campus, and sponsored the area's first active shooter exercise in collaboration with Amherst Police, Snyder Fire, and Twin City Ambulance. And we also established the college's first ever fully integrated information technology operation and the institution's first CIO. And we now have a completely modernized technological infrastructure, including substantial protection against cyber attacks, a sleek modern web website, and presenta presentation uh, technology installed in all of our main meeting rooms and just about every single classroom on campus. And we expanded the breadth and depth of our educational offerings to include new graduate programs and partnerships in cytotechnology, pharmacy, public health, social work, veterinarian medicine, osteopathic medicine, and applied behavioral analysis. We became the only NCAA Division II athletics program in all of Buffalo, Niagara region. And even in our first three years, have competed well in the East Coast Conference, qualifying and completing and competing in 25 championship events and sending athletes to national championship events in cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field. And these are just a very few highlights illustrating the incredible momentum we've built up in the last few years. And I think you'll all agree that this is progress everyone in this room should be proud of. And I want to point out that many of these projects that I just mentioned were supported by grants and generous donations from foundations and from donors such as you. You've not only supported stu student scholarships through events such as tonight's gala, but you've shown your faith in our overall forward progress and helped us rise to new heights. So thank you, each and every one of you, for the confidence you have in us. And you know, you, you made the launch of Drive to 75 a huge success, and I'm certain uh, that you'll help us get across the finish line. We're poised to build an even brighter future for Damon, and together I think uh, we can make that possible. With your support, we'll continue to change lives each and every day. It's now my great pleasure to introduce to you one of the Damon's most talented and outstanding students, Emily Buzzard, who truly embodies the hard work, tenacity, 
and hope of a Damon student. Emily Buzzard. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Buzzard. I'm a recent Damon graduate, and I am currently a graduate student in the Advanced Standing Masters of Social Work program here at Damon. It is an honor to be up here tonight and be able to share with you how Damon has impacted my life over the past four years. In high school, academics and extracurricular activities were very important to me. So when I was searching for colleges, I wanted to find one that would support and value both of these. To my luck, I found Damon. Since my first year, I've gotten involved in a lot of activities and organizations on campus. In my undergraduate years, I was a member of the Social Work Alliance, the Honors Program, I was a resident assistant, and I am a member of two collegiate honor societies, Phi Alpha and Psi Chi. By being in the Honors Program, I was given the opportunity to travel to Chicago and Seattle for four days and attend the National Collegiate Honors Conference in 2015 and 2016. Believe it or not, it was my first time on a plane. <laughs> At these conferences, we were able to learn about how other colleges across the country ran their honors programs and found ways to better our, better our program here at Demon. Through these conferences, I was able to work with the honors program director and the vice president of student affairs on relocating the Dr. Peter A. Sadlecki Honors Lounge. Thanks to the hard work of Damon, we now have an honors house that serves as both a lounge and a residential space for our members. Within this space, we are able to study, plan for annual events, print for free, and have a space we can call our own. Being a member of the honors program has given me endless opportunities. I've been able to travel, build closer relationships with faculty, dive deeper into class subjects that interest me, apply for scholarships, and improve my leadership skills. I can't wait to see how this program will continue to grow over time and impact the lives of future students. I was given the amazing opportunity to travel to the Dominican Republic for a two-week service trip. I had the pleasure of traveling with 15 fellow students and one of my social work professors. During the first week, my friend and I stayed with Hertrudis, our wonderful host mother. Hertrudis opened up her home to us and shared with us her culture, language, and the beauty of her country. I remember in the mornings when we would wake up, she'd have a hot breakfast on the table and an episode of Jorge El Curioso, Curious George, <laughs> playing for us because it was the only show her Spanish skills could keep up with. <laughs> Later, we traveled out of Santo Domingo and over to the small town of Lecheria. The people of Lecheria welcomed us with open arms and gave us a tour of their homes. As I walked through the town, I was in shock. It's one of those things that truly doesn't sink in until you see it. The houses are made of scrap material and barely patched to keep the walls together. Large families were living in, the, in homes the size of a bathroom. I felt guilty just knowing that I had a house to go home to and clean drinking water in my hand. Due to these poor conditions, my peers and I alternated between holding educational groups and helping build bleachers for the community's basketball court. The group that I was a part of focused on teaching teenagers in the village about money management skills and hopes for a brighter future. We also had the opportunity to talk with them one-on-one -on -one and learn more about their personal stories and struggles. During my studies, my classmates and I conducted research for Access of Western New York, a nonprofit organization that supports members of the Arab American community and people of other nationalities living in America. My group focused on examining the experiences of first and second generation Muslim immigrants living in Lackawanna, New York, as it relates to their identity, their use of resources, and the supports needed to foster their integration into society and quality of life. It was exciting to conduct live research for an organization and know that our efforts were actually going to help members in the community. After we collected our data, we presented our preliminary findings at Damon's Academic Festival. We provided recommendations to improve programming, services, and supports based on the needs of each generation. In my senior year, 
I had the honor of being selected to complete my field placement at the Erie County District Attorney's Office in the Victim Witness Bureau. When my supervisor saw that I was from Damon, he told me he already knew I was going to do a phenomenal job. And let me just say, hearing that on your first day makes you feel really good. <laughs> I thought that I was one step ahead of the game already. In my placement, I accompanied victims to county, city, and criminal court and provided support, information, and guidance. I also helped explain the court process, acted as a liaison between crime victims and the Office of Victim Services, and assisted in the compilation, distribution, and submission of victim impact statements. I have also had the opportunity of working within multiple bureaus, including vehicular crimes, domestic violence, and special victims, where I've been able to sit in on forensic interviews at the Child Advocacy Center and work alongside Child Protective Services, attorneys, and Buffalo Police investigators. Now, in graduate school, I'm currently completing my clinical field placement at Child and Family Services, like four doors down. <laughs> um, I will be working alongside their clinicians and gaining experience in the areas of trauma and mental health. I will also be learning how to facilitate social skills groups and gain experience in an educational setting by going to those local schools with satellite therapists. After graduate school, I plan to obtain my license and hope to fulfill my dream of becoming a child trauma and mental health therapist right here in Western New York. All of these opportunities and experiences may not have existed if it was not for Damon and their consistent drive to network, build a strong academic foundation, and push students to seek experiences outside of the classroom. Damon cultivates strong, professional, and well-rounded students that make a positive difference in the community. My time and accomplishments over the past four years have proved to me that Damon makes things happen. No goal, no dream is too far out of reach. I, like many of my peers, can say that I am proud to be a Damon graduate. I'm thankful for all of the time and energy that they have put into me, and I can't wait to see and hear about the successes of their dedicated students in the years to come. Thank you. Isn't she great? You know? <laughs> Every time I hear one of uh, our students uh, talk, it just makes me realize how little I did when I was in college. And, uh, <clears throat> before I present uh, the, the well-deserved award uh, tonight uh, to uh, our honoree, I'd like uh, you to enjoy a, a short video in recognition of uh, her service. So uh, let's roll it. The Damon College 2018 Community Excellence Award, Joan C. Stovroff. A longtime entrepreneur, leader, and philanthropist in the Buffalo, Niagara region, Joni started her career with Stovroff and Herman Realtors a business she co-founded with her husband, Morton, and her business partner, Don Herman. In 1988, Joni and her business partner, Jackie Taylor, started Stove Roth and Taylor Travel. They re-entered the real estate industry in 2004 with the opening of Stove Roth and Taylor Realtors, where she serves as president. Under her leadership, the business has grown and prospered. And as a working mother, she has been a great mentor and positive role model for many women. Active in the community, Joni has served on several boards. She was one of the first two women to serve on the Buffalo Area Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. A strong supporter of Damon, Joni is a member of the college's Community Advisory Board. Her family established the Joan Cooper Stovroff Endowed Scholarship for Women in recognition of Joni's exemplary career as a business leader and to celebrate Joni's 75th birthday. Damon College is pleased to present the 2018 Community Excellence Award to Joan C. Stovroff. So, we're very fortunate to have a wonderful friend and supporter like Joni at our college. 
in all that she does, Joni is committed to the good of others and to helping community and Damon. Her talents, integrity, and generosity make her an outstanding honoree, uh, and I think you all agree. So for her leadership, contributions to the greater community, and passion to make a difference, I present the 2018 Community Excellence Award to Joni Cooper Stavro. Thank you. Have to put the glasses on. <laughs> I have to say, I am moved and stunned to receive this award tonight. There are so many deserving people among us that to be selected is indeed an honor. I want to thank those of you who made this possible, one I will cherish for years to come, truly a night to remember. In three short months, I'm going to be 86 years old. You can, re you can relax, I'm not going to reminisce all 86 years. <laughs> I went to Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri, a two-year finishing school. My mother thought I needed to get finished. <laughs> there have been many discussions as to my being finished. I refused to wear nylons with seams in them, so I became a waitress in the dining hall. We wore cute little hats and no nylons. From there, I went to Tufts University in Boston to become a physical therapist. It didn't take long before I realized I wasn't good with any type of illness or physical limitations. <laughs> Fortunately, I met a handsome young naval officer while attending a wedding in Buffalo a few years before. After a few months, of communicating by writing letters, letters. <laughs> yes, we actually wrote letters, putting a stamp on the envelope and put it in a mailbox. <laughs> After a short period of time, he called asking how much longer did he have to wait? Goodbye, Tufts. <laughs> <laughs> I arrived in Buffalo as the blushing bride of Morton Stovroff, a die-hard Buffalonian. I was 22 years old, moving from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, home of Little League Baseball. I knew a lot about baseball, but nothing about being a wife, cooking, babies, or business. <laughs> I remember vividly calling my mother crying, not on a cell phone. <laughs> I was crying because the ham wouldn't fit under the broiler. <laughs> that pretty much summed up my cooking career. <laughs> Not to mention being Jewish, she asked what I was doing with a ham in the first place. <laughs> Morton was an engineer with Worthington Pump, leaving me with nothing to do during the day. I began working for Welcome Wagon, making $2.50 per visit. Without the benefit of Google, <laughs> I put two and two together and realized these people were new homeowners. The light bulb went on. 250 per visit versus a commission selling a house? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Off to Stuart Hunt I went, 
Most of you have probably heard of Hunt Real Estate, right? Yes, that is where I began my real estate career, which I still love today. My association with Damon College was establishing an endowment fund for entrepreneurial women in celebration of my 75th birthday. Each year, a committee at Damon reviews the applicant, the, all of the applicants, narrows down the field, then I, along with Jackie Taylor, meet with the candidates and choose the following year's recipient. Let me tell you, it's difficult. Each of these women, many being the first in their family to attend college, going to school full time, holding down part-time jobs, some have two to three jobs, doing everything possible to make their dreams become a reality. More than once, we aren't able to choose one over another, and two are awarded the scholarship for the following year. Damon is a diverse community offering an equal opportunity to anyone with the desire to earn a college degree. My endowment fund serves as a stepping stone to make her dream come true. In some small way, each and every one of us here tonight have the opportunity to make a lasting impact on someone's life we don't even know. Damon College, with our help, makes dreams come true. Thank you. Isn't she great? <laughs> I think she could have been in television, too. <laughs> so, uh, Joni, we're really grateful for, for your support of the college and uh, for what you've done in the community and everything. So uh, you're, a, you're a great friend to all of us in this room. Uh, and I want to say to everyone here, thank you also for your support, uh, both of Joni and of, uh, of Damon, uh, we, uh, we uh, really appreciate it, and most importantly, our students do too. Uh, you, you heard um, Emily, I, I hope you got a, a chance to see some of the uh, testimonials on the table, uh, but really our, uh, our students are really quite extraordinary, and I meant it when I said every time I hear one of them, that's what I think of. Anyway, have a good evening, stay as long as you would like. I would want to make a toast before we go, though. Um, you should have a flute of champagne there somewhere. So to our honoree, the one and only Joni Stavrov. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.